All right, Kyle, we are ready to kick into gear with this episode. And I'm actually really excited for this episode. Uh, we're actually recording this uh, right after school ended. So Woo. it's kind of like we're going to talk about some things in this episode about like relaxing and some summer growth and some summer learning. Uh, but then we're like, hey, let's let's kick it up. This is this is our time. And uh, a lot of times that we take our summer to kind of uh, ramp up uh, the podcast, we ramp up some of our course offerings for this year. So we're excited to kind of uh, focus on uh, make math moments for a little bit uh, and, and take a break from our classes. So uh, Kyle, this episode is specifically about your summer guide to growth. So let's uh, let's kick my it summer some, guide, like uh, not anybody else's just mine. yours and mine and, and you listener right now. All so right. uh, let's kick it in. Let's let's talk about some things that we recommend doing this summer. Yeah, we're going to dive right in. Like John's saying, like what a what a year it's been this past year, oh. both in school, out of school, online, face-to-face. -face. Uh, here in Ontario, it was face-to-face -face and online, then face-to-face mm -hmm. -face and online again. <laughs> and, you know, really this summer, we're hoping the big message is going to be rest and relaxation. We're going to talk a lot mm -hmm. about that. But uh, in order to rest and relax, that, that doesn't mean just, you know, sort of staring off into space, right? Like we want to do something productive right. with our time and, you know, feel like we've accomplished something while resting as well. So we're not going to waste any time. We're going to dive straight in. Um, first off, uh, I feel like you've already checked this one off the list because, John, if they're mm -hmm. listening to That's us true. right now, they're yeah. going to have done our number one on our list, which is get into a podcast mm -hmm. of some type. So uh, congratulations. You're hanging out with us on the Making Math Moments That Matter podcast. Yes, um, there are a ton of benefits, as you probably know, as you likely know. Uh, John and I both uh, have gone on runs, um, you know, early morning exercise, that sort of thing. But also I find in the summertime, you know, while I try to keep up with that exercise, so I'm, I'm listening to these podcasts, uh, including our podcast to re-listen to some of these episodes as mm -hmm. well. Um, but now you also probably have like family trips in mind, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. time in the car. So you have this opportunity to do some learning. So of course, diving into our, um, our podcast is one, maybe you're new here. And if you are, you probably are thinking ahead to like, what changes are you going to make next mm -hmm year next school year and uh, we've got a couple episodes to help you out with that john uh yeah. what would be the episode you would recommend for someone who may you know have some episodes to catch up on i mean we have over 130 yeah. episodes under our belt here where should they be focusing their time yeah this is a this is a great question because we have so many episodes some people will think uh i gotta go back and and think it's a series you know it's like i have to wa listen to or you know you're watching a tv show on netflix you have to start a episode one because you won't know if you start on episode seven what's happened right uh our podcast isn't like that right like kyle like uh, i think i think if you are new here and listening to this episode you might want to go back and listen to one through four but then after that uh, what you want to do is is choose episodes that are that uh, that that phrase how we to you like yeah, they, that they, pebble in your shoe that are like yeah. oh I'm really struggling with homework you know and then search the titles all our whole catalog is on your podcast platform so if you're listening right now on Apple Podcasts like uh, over eighty percent of the people who are listening to our podcast do then uh, search the titles go through them and go okay. That's mm -hmm. bugging me right now. I've had questions about homework. I want to dive into that one. Oh, this one's about the thinking classroom. I want to dive into that one. I want to hear about this one. Oh, this one was with John Hattie. And he talked mm -hmm. about how to like think about the, the, um, uh, some of the statistics that he was developing in the studies that he, the big meta study that he published, uh, like I want to dive in there, or maybe it's like, I want to listen to one of those mentoring episodes that had to deal yeah. with uh, teaching online. Cause I might have to start that way uh, come this, this fall. So I would first recommend going through the list and going, where should like try to like nail down where you are on your journey and then go there. And, and I would, I would recommend against trying to go from episodes one all the way to episode 136, which is this one, right, Kyle? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I couldn't agree more. And really, it's like, what what's 
what's speaking to you now, right? Like mm-hmm. what's that current challenge you have? So, you know, one of the episodes that I know we're thinking about and, and we think would be helpful mm-hmm. would be uh, some of our episodes on how to start the school year off right. So we've got two episodes. Uh, our first time we sort of uh, tackled this one, mm-hmm. it was like entering into our first new school year after we started the podcast way back in episode 36. And uh, we dove into some of the strategies, some of the ideas on how to start that year off right to build community, build trust, build those relationships with students. Because to be honest, everything we talk about on every episode revolves around building a culture of learners, of thinkers, of trust with our students. Otherwise, if we don't do those things, then it's mm-hmm. going to be really difficult to follow the Make Math Moments three-part framework. And, you know, we haven't just stopped there, John. Uh, I, I think you remember when mm-hmm. we went online, uh, we dove into another episode where we took yeah. some of these strategies and tried to apply them to the online learning world, which I know some people might still be online, sadly. Yeah. Uh, come uh, September or come August, depending on where you are in North America listening, or some of you might still be online somewhere else in the world. So, uh, yeah. John, what episode yeah. did we cover well, the distance learning version? You're right. You're right, Kyle. Episode 36 was definitely pre-pandemic. And so we talk about all the the building that uh, the that that the culture building has to happen in your classroom. And then and then episode 88 is the one you're referencing is which we did last summer, uh, getting ready for the school year, knowing that we were going to be teaching teaching um, in some sort of kind of blended model, or we're going to be teaching in this different, this different dynamic where we uh, are cohorted and social distancing and we're teaching all day to students. And, and I think even maybe even at that time, we didn't know exactly what our classroom <laughs> might even look like. Um, but uh, in episode 88, we definitely uh, dove into uh, how do you, how do you take these, these culture building activities that we do on day one or the first week that we talked about in episode 36 and how do you morph them? How do you change them uh, so that uh, you can, you know, you can do this either online or in a face-to-face model or a blended model. That was episode 88. And we also uh, last summer did a a webinar around that topic, how to, how to get ready for the school year uh, while we are teaching remotely. And uh, that was our webinar topic. That's that uh, all of our past webinars like that one end up in the Academy, uh, the Make Math Moments Academy afterwards. So that was episode 88. Uh, Kyle, what else? What else could we do here? Uh, What's maybe another podcast uh, that we can talk about? Yeah, like, I mean, there's a ton of education podcasts out Mm -hmm. there. And I would recommend, you know, if you're on our podcast on Apple Podcasts or on Google Podcasts, Spotify, uh, check the suggestions at the bottom because Mm -hmm. these uh, search engines are actually pretty, pretty smart at figuring out what you might like and what would align. But um, I'm wondering, though, John, while we do want to promote the learning in the education space, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. both you and I are podcast listeners and not just in education. Like a lot of people would assume yeah. you and I are just nonstop. All we do is listen to podcasts about math, talk about math, read about math. I know for me, um, we're both going to share a non-math podcast here. Just uh, maybe maybe it strikes your fancy. If not, <laughs> look for what you're after. Like for yeah. me, I always felt like I didn't really understand investing in the stock market. So a podcast that helped me early on was called Invest Ed. Uh, if you so invested, but invest hmm. ed for education. And I really like that as sort of an entry point for me to understand a bit about how the stock market works, but then also how to do it in a way that, you know, you don't feel like you're risking a lot. So for me, that was kind of an entry into that place. I just felt like, you know, I needed to learn more about it because I can't just assume that I'm going to get a paycheck from education for the rest of my life. And, you know, my pension's there. That's great. Um, but I wanted to kind of have a little bit more control in that world. How about you, John? What's yeah. uh, what's a podcast that's, that you dive that's into? A, that's a really good, uh, a really good recommendation, Kyle, is, is because there's so many podcasts uh, out there. Uh, I think they're the, the last I heard was like, there are three, three million podcasts. Uh, uh, however, they're only like, there's they're only like less than a million active podcasts, uh, which means like somebody might make a podcast and then it's over there uh, not being con- uh, contributed to on a regular basis. But we like are less... one millionth of the <laughs> active podcasts out there. Just <laughs> less, think about that. Less than that, because there's uh, there's the people who are 
are regularly contributing to their podcast stream on a regular basis. Not uh, not even a, a million people are doing that Ooh. or a million podcasts, but meaning a million, uh, a million regular ones that are ongoing. There is so much to learn. There's actually a podcast on so many different things that you can learn from. Um, yeah. So another uh, another podcast that I'm going to share here, I've shared uh, here, I think, on our podcast before uh it's one of my go-to in the summer because these come out in the summer it's always uh released in the summer which is revisionist history which is malcolm gladwell's podcast it's my go-to uh podcast in the summer i love every single episode he puts uh so much thought work um uh, and he he brings to life some sort of past history that might be misunderstood and uh the one that i just listened to this first episode from this season is all about uh, uh autonomous cars and he has this great uh uh, uh, uh his seg segment in that episode about him getting in the car and then trying to fool the car in a number of different ways uh and he talks about like how autonomous cars possibly uh could be the gateway to having uh pedestrians take back the streets which is such an interesting idea uh malcolm gladwell always great the podcasts are well produced and uh, they're just like listening to audio books so i would recommend that one for sure kyle uh which is a you know a, a common theme i think we're going to talk about here in the ways that we can uh you know our guide to growth is we got some math stuff and then we got some non-math stuff right so it's like yeah. we have summer uh my old self would just be like i'm just going all no math at all all summer and then come come September, I'm kind of like, oh man, I gotta gotta start rethinking about this. Whereas now, I like to kind of mix and match a little bit throughout the summer. Kyle, yeah. what should we? Uh, what's another thing? Uh, I think we got we wanted to talk about five things. Uh, that's one. What's another? Um, what's another growth uh, strategy that we can uh, implement this summer to uh, kind of up our game? Yeah, absolutely. Like for you and I, we are, I mean, again, so we just talked about how we don't only listen to math or education podcasts. We do other things as well. However, um, throughout the summer, we do try to pick up on new learning. And mm -hmm. we talk about this on the podcast all the time that every single day we are learning something new. Um, and oftentimes like both in, in two sort of lenses, like from a pedagogical standpoint, so like teaching and learning, but then also from like a content knowledge standpoint. So we're going to recommend if you have the opportunity to dive into some learning, maybe check out some courses that are out there. Like mm -hmm. I know, for example, uh, Joe Bowler has had some fantastic educator courses out there. So check out ucube.org and see what they have going on. Maybe there's an extra program going on um, in your in your jurisdiction, in your province, where they have some webinars happening, uh, live webinars, things of that nature. And I know for us uh, over here at the Make Math Moments Academy, we've got a ton of things going on in particular um, you know, one that I, I'm really loving in this point in our time in Ontario, where we're de-streaming math in grade nine, really looking at assessment practices. So mm -hmm. our assessment for growth course is one that a lot of educators are kind of diving into over this summertime. Um, but John, I know that, uh, mm -hmm. I, I know that, that, you know, there's some reasons why people might even consider doing a course that's maybe a little bit more formal, like some of the courses inside the academy, like what would be the goal other than just to to learn and and push your thinking and your teaching forward yeah so so that we've like kyle just said we've got lots of courses in the academy and you can get in there and get uh, your first 30 days for free which is loads of time mm. uh, especially in the summer to uh to to grab you know fully complete the assessment course that kyle talked about it's like it's it's one of our larger courses that uh, we have in our program and it's a perfect uh, time to kind of uh, you've been following what we've been talking about in the podcast uh, or on our blog. And then it's almost like now I, the piece I'm missing is like, how do I make assessment fit into this? We've built a course around that. But I think a lot of people, Kyle, take our courses and other courses uh, because they not only up their math game, right? So, uh, or their pedagogical game uh, become comes school year uh, in this new school year, but also like there's a lot of people out there that are looking to up on the pay scale, right, Kyle? So it's like um, some districts, like I know here in Ontario, uh, we have to take AQ courses for that, uh, which are through universities. Uh, however, we are affiliated with a university program 
and uh, in the in the in the states. So if you are um, an American and are looking to up your pay scale, you can definitely check out requirements uh, for your district or your state. Actually, we have a little um, we have a little thing on our website, a little link on our website that you can do that. And uh, we provide certificates and we provide uh, kind of some qualifications there that you can use to up your pay scale provided because uh, we, we usually on our on, or on our certificates, we say how many hours of professional learning you have done in those courses. That's uh, a reason that uh, some people choose our courses is not only just up your math game, which is a benefit, uh, but also, hey, you get to move up the pay scale as well. Uh, at the same time, it's like um, two birds, Kyle, two birds. Uh, the uh, the other thing, Kyle, we have an, a course coming up. This is out of the summer, uh, but this fall. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, Kyle. We have our proportions course coming up. Yeah, our one of our flagship programs is the concept holding your students back. We run it only once a year. Uh, Academy members can uh, can partake partake during the school year or any time throughout the year. But for those who are looking to be a part of the next cohort coming up this fall, we are diving into the concept holding your students back, and it's really all about proportional reasoning and the roadmap to proportional relationships. And this course began as sort of just something like I was, I was playing with ratios and rates and, you know, got in some great conversations with James Tanton and a huge crew of friends from the U S and uh, out came this nine module course um, that uh, we have been sort of working on over this past 18 months and really um, allowing you to sort of see how things progress all the way from understanding measurement and comparison, all the way to multiplicative comparison using ratio rates, and then again, proportional relationships. So this particular course is going to be going live in the fall. And uh, we are thinking you definitely want to check it out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're excited to uh, kick in another cohort. We've ran that cohort last year. We're ready to run another cohort on that particular topic. Kyle, uh, let's move on to our third growth strategy here. Uh, the first two we talked uh, already, one being uh, listen to a podcast, but you're doing that mm -hmm. already. Uh, second, we just finished talking about, which is take a course uh, to up your math game or on your pay scale. Number three uh, is, hey, let's let's get some reading in because I know people head to the beach and they're looking for some reading material. And some people just say, Kyle, I'm not, I like, I read for pleasure. Like I might read fiction, uh, but I'm somebody else might be like, you know what? I want to read a little bit about math and fiction, mm -hmm. but also it's like, well, if I'm going to read about math strategies or if I'm going to meet a read about how to be better in the classroom, what should I read? Right? Like that has to come up too. It's like, well, how do I know what's the best to read? Kyle, tell us about the list. Yeah, okay. we've got this ultimate list <laughs> for math teachers, and uh, it's hosted on uh, my old website. However, if you head to makemathmoments.com forward slash books, it will pop you over here. And this list really gives you uh, some must reads, some great must reads like, mm -hmm. you know, math mindsets. This is one, you know, we don't talk about it a lot anymore because it, it was it feels like so long ago when this had an impact on our teaching. But if you haven't read that, you've got to pick it up. Uh, Becoming the Teacher You Wish You Had is a great, great book by Tracy Johnson Zagger. And we have a ton of others like Five Practices that we've talked about so, uh, so long on this podcast or for so long. So this list is like never ending. You definitely want to check it out. We've got a guide that you can actually take with you as well so that you can kind of sift through and really, again, just like with the podcast, try to find what is speaking to you, what is going to help you with that pebble in your shoe. Mm -hmm. So that list is over at makemathmoments.com forward slash books, and you should definitely check it out. John, what is the book that has sort of uh, blown your mind uh, most recently yeah. on your particular list? I think, I think uh, it should be on everyone's summer read list if they have not yet grabbed it. And it's relatively new. I just, uh, we, we just released a, a YouTube video on this, this week, uh, the, the week of this recording. So if you're listening to this, we released it last week. And uh, this is the thinking classroom by Peter Lillidal. 
And uh, we've talked with Peter here on the podcast twice. He's one of our, uh, you know, repeating guests. We don't have too many repeating guests, but he is, uh, I think, our first repeating guest. And we chatted with him about how he got started in his educational journey in the first episode, but then also how that morphed into his work around the thinking classroom and changing uh, your class from mimickers into thinkers. Mm -hmm. And and we've all been wanting to do that, right? And and he wrote a book finally um, on that and was published last year and it's uh i think the, the book is published by corwin and uh it's it's a great read i know that we, we've been chatting with it with lots of folks in the make math moments community and lots of people are loving this book and uh can't recommend it enough we can't recommend it enough as it's uh it's definitely revolutionized what we're doing in our math classrooms peter has done a great job on that and it is an easy read so it's on your to read list this summer if you have not yet read it I love it. And, you know, the book that really uh, I, that I want to talk about is one that has really shifted my thinking from a content knowledge perspective. Mm -hmm. And that is the Teaching Developmentally book for middle school mathematics by John Vandewall and friends, uh, because he does have some help from some other educators like uh, Jennifer Bay Williams, uh, who's going to be a part of our virtual summit this year. That book and a lot of the thinking from Vandewall has really made me question my understanding of mathematics in general, uh, what I assume to be true or the rules that I tend to follow uh, and really makes me analyze it at a different level. So that's a great book for you to think about. Um, and then also a couple books that are not education related. I, I mean, I'm going to say they are education related, but they're outside of the uh, K to 12 education space. They're more of like self-help type education books. Um, one that's really shifted the way I do things is by James Clear called Atomic Habits. Uh, if you've struggled to get going with a habit, like, uh, you know, a lot of people have these myths about, you know, if uh, you want a new habit, it's going to take you 14 mm -hmm. days or mm -hmm. 35 days or, you know, enter right. in any number because you've heard them all, right? People are like, yeah. no, no, on average, a habit takes this long. Well, turns out that James Clear, he kind of busts through a lot of these myths and, and sort of brings it down to the fact that every habit's different and it's mm -hmm. going to take a different length of time. But he gives you some great approaches that will help you get into a habit so that you can essentially force yourself to make the habit stick. And, uh, you know, I know we've talked about it on the web or on the uh, podcast before. One for me was always about running, like getting up in the morning and sort of like always you know, I say always, but, you know, every now and again, I would feel like ah, I'd make some sort of excuse. And, you know, the the one little tidbit I'll give you that really impacted me, and there's so much more in this book, was this idea of like, even if you're not feeling well, you go and you do the habit, even if you don't see it all the way through. So at least you get the routine mm. sticking. So right. if it's going for a run, maybe I'm not feeling that great. Go put your shoes on get outside and walk and see how far you can walk. Nice. And then half the time, what would happen more than half the time, probably 90% of the time, if I could get myself to that point, I would end up doing the rest sure. of it. You know? Yeah. So to me, that was huge. That's a big one. John, how about you? What's yeah. a big book that uh, really impacts you or that you found really helpful? Mm -hmm. The one that I read this year that impacted me the most um, is called Quiet, uh, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking by uh, Susan Cain. I, I uh, did a couple sessions on it this year in our virtual summit and as well in, we've included it in one of our webinars. And it's, it's a powerful book because after reading this, and I think before reading this book, I kind of a identified as an introvert. We've talked about that here on the podcast too. And, and it was amazing to read about yourself. You know, you're reading about this introvert uh, and, and what power we draw and how we draw our power, how extroverts draw their powers and, you know, what you can do and, and what, what our world is like uh, that, you know, it really opened my eyes that our world, <laughs> our world really, uh, caters to extroverts um, in in business and in work and school, and that's where the schooling part came in for me. We that's how we used it in our say webinar and also in one of our courses that we, we use it in our assessment course to talk about uh, like what are we doing in our our classroom to to you know reward maybe unconsciously extroverts over introverts and it really opened my eyes uh, to uh some of the some of the habits and techniques that i was using in my classroom so i would put that one on your reading list this summer if you have not yet 
uh, done that, you can get it uh, here in the show notes page. We've got some links to all the resources and references that we are talking about here in this episode. All right, Kyle, that was uh, the third strategy out of uh, five here strategies. And uh, let's let's keep moving on. And uh, the next one, right, is uh, uh, let's explore math content. Because I think, I think a lot of us are like, okay, let's let's learn about teaching and the pedagogy side. But a lot of us still are like, I'm really not confident on the math side of things. Yeah. And, do, and John, I, I might even go as far as to say that, you know what, it's, it's one of two things, either you're feeling maybe not as confident with the math or you're overconfident in the math. And I would argue you right. and I were probably in the camp. That was of me, like, yeah. We never worried about the math content because we knew that we could do the math. But, but I was, yeah, we were rule followers though when we absolutely. had that thought, right? It was like, yeah. I, could, I know how to do math because I know all the tricks. Absolutely. So we were constantly sort of like weaseling our way uh, out of situations based on what we had known to be true. And, you know, we knew the rule. We knew we could get ourselves, you know, we could solve problems. And, you know, once in a while you get stumped in some of the higher, uh, higher mm -hmm. high school grades in a calculus course or something. But at the end of the day, what we realized is that actually our our uh, confidence in mathematics in general actually held us back from helping more students because we didn't really think about how the math developed at all. So that's one thing that we'd really, um, really try to nudge you towards. And of course, we talked about some books like, uh, you know, the Van de Waal book can really help with that. Mm -hmm. um, the courses that we, uh, we had shared, uh, in particular, the proportions course that's coming up. But another way that you can dive in in. And you can actually do this with some colleagues or maybe even your, your children at home or maybe even some of your family members. I There's nothing I love more than blowing someone's mind around division when they realize that, wow, there's two types of division. Like it, it's maybe not the best party trick, but at the kitchen table <laughs> with family, sometimes, sometimes it could be really fun. So, it, you know, if you're looking for how you could get started on that journey, I would rec uh, recommend heading to our problem-based math page where we have all of our problem-based math units. We've got some new ones that just came out, depending on when you're listening to this. Um, if you're listening to it, when this goes live uh, Monday morning, you uh, will see like squares to triangles. So this is a great, a great unit that unpacks the Pythagorean theorem, maybe in a way that you never really thought mm -hmm. of it, right? So if like Pythagorean theorem was always a formula to you, um, then this is one that will really like pique your own curiosity, but then also allow you to see how some students might enter into this problem. Um, some other ones like this Girl Guide Cookies unit, uh, we had a task called Girl Guide Cookies, um, but now we've extended it out into a five-day unit that really gets to the crux of, of what um, volume is when it comes to rectangular prisms. And it really gives you an opportunity to sort of explore. Now, if you're, the division part is blowing your mind, you're like, hey, I want to learn more about what Kyle's talking about with division. I would say sowing seeds is where you want to begin that journey um, because this one, it, it it is accessible for pretty much any age group. And uh, it really allows you and highlights this idea of partitive and quotative division, but then also sort of lends itself to this idea of ratios that like, oh, I'm using different type of reasoning. Like one is like more of like a rate reasoning and the other is more of like a ratio reasoning, like a scaling. Mm. And uh, that right there, you Kyle, can do a whole lot of learning with. Kyle, I'm just going to throw a question out here for a listener who's like, okay, well, when I go to like resource pages that have lessons and tasks. I see that I see what I would use with my students. How do the how does the teacher guide that we're providing help teachers learn the math on the back end? Yeah, that's a great question and you know, we spend a lot of time one of the things that you know, I would say we spend the most time on is the teacher guide with helping you with the facilitation of the math learning. So we're not saying, hey, go try this out and, you know, hopefully you figure mm -hmm. it out. Right. You know, you come into the teacher guide. And for those who are watching this on YouTube, you can kind of see the screen behind me here. Um, we give you the intentionality, like what are we trying to address this day? So on day one, we're really trying to look at partitive division uh, it, when the total quota is known, which is the, the div dividend, the total quota is known and the number of parts are groups is also known and that it's going to reveal a rate. So that might, you know, to you as the educator, you might go, I didn't know that. 
Is that important? And I'm going to say that if it's in the intentionality section, it is important and you have to give it a, a little bit of exploration. So you could go through this and you can actually see how this might look in your class, but then also do the math yourself. And then the beautiful part, one of my favorite parts um, is this student approach section where you start to see what students do at different developmental phases. So for example, my son who's in grade one, he would tend to go to this like fair sharing model. And you can see up on the screen, it's just basically like some circles. And then he's like, splitting up these seeds. That's what this is about. It's, uh, you know, uh, on planting seeds. Uh, so that's one thing. But, you know, you might also get a student who's used an open array before. So you get to see that model. So all kinds of things going on in here. So you get sort of two things. You get to explore some mathematics, but at the same time, you're helping yourself prepare mm -hmm. for next year when you are, um, you know, trying to think ahead to like, what sort of resources do I want to bring into my classroom to do with my students, especially if we're trying to spark curiosity through this inquiry approach? Um, this is a great place to start. So you'll up your own content knowledge and your pedagogical content knowledge is going to sort of shift as well while you're sort of putting in some like we'll call it like a bag of tricks you're like filling up your bag of tricks for you know when you do have to address division later in the school year awesome stuff uh, that's i think that's a pretty good recap uh we have uh, like kyle said there are oh tons of tasks covering lots of different topics up on our task page uh, which is makemathmoments.com forward slash tasks. Anyone can uh, get on over there and, and have a peek. Uh, only academy, academy members get those full uh, teacher guides for the multiple days. As Kyle said, we had many units, uh, five-day units, four-day units um, that uh, that go along with say that topic we kind of explore that uh, that uh, context uh, out throughout a number of days all right kyle let's wrap things up here in our last uh strategy our first four strategies that we've already chatted about one being uh listen to a podcast you're doing that number two is take a course uh number three is let's read some books this summer uh and uh, number four being what kyle just talked about is the content and upping our content game kyle let's talk about the last one which is the most important uh which yeah. is relaxing let's let's yeah. do some time let's take some time you talked about this right at the top of the episode about we've had such a, a a tough year and i think we can all agree to that we ended last year tough we had a whole year mm -hmm. that was tough for uh, um for almost all of us uh, listening right now um so we got it we got to take some time off right we got to take time off so that we are ready to rock uh come startup time yeah, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of people also uh, wonder whether we take our own advice. So again, John, uh, you mm -hmm. and I, summertime, we do a lot for the Make Math Moments sort of world. We we pre-record a lot of podcast episodes. We mm -hmm. do all these things, but please note that we do schedule it in and we try to make it as, um, we'll say, as uh, interference-less as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now, for example, you know, my son is with his buddy at the park <laughs> and my daughter is with my wife and they are out shopping, doing what they love to do. So what do I do with that, that little bit of time? I say, hey, John, let's hop mm -hmm. on and let's record this podcast because this, to me, it's like a form of relaxation. Mm -hmm. Uh, but make sure that you <laughs> relax too. So don't let any of these ideas that we've shared with you sort of, you know, interrupt your family time, that time to sort of unwind, that time to maybe disconnect or unplug for a little while. Um, because do know that we schedule in time, you know, according to some of these books that we've read before, mm -hmm. uh, we schedule in this time so that we can do those things as well, uh, while still kind of pushing our thinking forward at the same time. So yep. we want to thank you so much for hanging out with us today on the Making Math Moments That Matter podcast. And hey, um, before we like sign off here, John, mm -hmm. let's ask everybody to do us a huge favor. Like lately, we've been doing a lot on Facebook with Facebook Lives. Um, we uh, have our Facebook group out there. So if you haven't liked and joined our Facebook group, search for Math Moment Makers or Make Math Moments on Facebook and note that you can actually click on notification settings so that Facebook will notify you. Like if you've mm -hmm. ever wondered, like, how come I never see Uncle Tom anymore, you know, on my Facebook feed? Well, Facebook <laughs> makes decisions about what you see unless you explicitly ask for it. So make sure you go and uh, 
turn those notifications right. on, find it in the uh, notification setting. And uh, I think we would like them to do the same on YouTube yeah, right? yeah. because we got a lot of action going on over there. Yeah. Each week we have been releasing uh, an episode on Mondays, uh, Monday mornings, along with our podcast episodes. So there's actually two posts each week on Facebook, uh, one being the podcast episode in video format and the second being a helpful tip, uh, a video uh, about, um, you know, something that we've seen in our group or uh, seen in our academy community area. Yeah, we we uh, released uh, last week's uh, episode or or clip was all about the, you know that summer reading guide that we talked to us specifically about Peter's uh, book, uh, Peter Lillard's book, The Thinking Classroom, and then we actually released a short a shortened clip from his session from our virtual summit, um, just to kind of sh uh, show you what the summit looked like, but also what they talked about in the. Um, in the uh in the ep in the in the episode so uh yeah head on over to youtube and hit the subscribe button there and the notifications button as well because we are sending one every single week out just like this podcast fantastic hey show notes and links to resources from this episode can be found at makemathmoments.com forward slash episode one three six so make sure you check it out if you're watching this on youtube just click on the link below it'll be in there for you uh and uh remember that you can find us on every social media platform we can't thank you enough mm -hmm. for being awesome math moment makers enjoy your summer everyone and uh we'll see you in the next episode take care everyone well until next time i'm kyle pierce and i'm john Orr. high fives for us and big high five for you.